afternoon, almost one year to the day that in the height of the pandemic, Match and Boxing launched its first ever fight camp series. We had Ted Cheeseman and Sam Eggington. We had Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas. And of course, who can forget that unbelievable uppercut from Alexander Povetkin that set up that rematch in Gibraltar and closed the show here at Matcham HQ. Some night, oh. and how many memories, Darren Barker, has this brought back for us? R ridiculous. <laughs> uh, look, I'm thrilled to be back. It was, it was epic, and, and the show finished in dramatic style. Uh, to be back with supporters now yes. it is brilliant. Um, they're in for a real treat. The, the card, though we've lost the top of the bill, Conor Ben, is still stacked. It, it's really good. You know, Zoukan Leeward, what, what a fight. Yeah, what an amazing uh, opportunity it is for Leeward. As you mentioned, 300 fans in attendance to create a nice bit of bubbling atmosphere. And fingers crossed, the sun is just poking through the clouds. It's been raining all week long. The luck of the Hearns comes in again. And fingers <laughs> crossed we get this for the next, yeah. not only six or seven hours, but also the next two weekends as well. We are absolutely buzzing. Um, um, for fight camp. What um, are you particularly looking forward to tonight, Darren? Anything that sticks out? The, the, look, the main event's intriguing. It's uh, You've got the, the absolute monster, uh, Zoukan, with his ridiculous work rate. 1,500 shots in his last contest, yeah. be it two years ago. Then Lee Wood, uh, we, we've heard Ben Davidson waxing lyrical about his power. Uh, so Lee's not going to have to go looking for Zoukan. So that's a fight I can't wait for. But I think the one that's captured everyone's imagination is the chief support. Yeah. Tommy McCarthy uh, and Chris Billum Smith, you know, the, the stylist versus the puncher, with, with all the domestic marbles on the line, it's a, it's a cracker. It certainly is. Um, just a reminder for you guys, this will be live on the zone around the world, including in the UK and Ireland. Very simple to download on your smart TV, tablet, or mobile device. Just $1.99 special introductory offer, and you get all of tonight's action and the next two weeks for that price as well. Here is how you do it. Stream live sport on DAZN. Just search D-A-Z-N in your app store and download DAZN to your smart TV, mobile device, computer or games console. Click on the subscription plan, sign up and create your account. Start streaming live sport, exclusive weekly content, archive events and award-winning documentary films. Only on DAZN. Well, we are back and there is the scene at Maskell. Six fights coming to you live from Brentwood tonight. Let's take a peek at the running order this evening. Well, the action starts right here at Match and Boxing Social Channels in about 10 minutes or so. Standout amateur star Sandy Ryan makes her much anticipated professional debut over six twos against Kirsty Babington. Myself and Darren will be on comms for that shortly, so stay tuned. We'll have a short break after as the action continues on the DAZN platform. Abney Yildrim box Canelo Alvarez. Last time out, Jack Cullen box, box John Doherty. They now climb for the IBF international middleweight title. New father Anthony Fowler meets late replacement Rico Muller after Robert Garcia went down uh, with an injury. Campbell Hatton's journey continues over four rounds against Jakob Laskowski, who fights in the UK for the first time. A three-belt tussle in our chief supports. He's Tommy McCarthy, but his European Cruiserweight title on the line. Chris Billum-Smith matches that with his Commonwealth crown and the vacant British strap. He's also up for grabs. And what a way to cap things off. Leeward challenges for Zoukan's WBA regular featherweight world title. We're going to talk about that next with our guest, Jordan. The Thrill Gill, and I'm so pleased to have you on, mate. Um, you were the man that opened proceedings here at Fight Camp last year. Just give us an insight as to what it's like when you walk down that ramp for the first time. Surely that you've never experienced anything like that before. It was very strange. It's good to be back. It's good to be back with fans, and uh, good to see that Eddie stepped up a level. Uh, it look, it's looking amazing, and when you walk down that ramp, it's like nothing else you've seen before. I think it was a bit weirder last year with no fans. Um, the sun was in my eyes a bit because I was first on. For the first three rounds, I was blinking. Yeah. But uh, I had to go to my, with my back to the sun and uh, made sure that the sun was in Riz eyes. I can't believe I've yet to, like, you're so laid back. I've not seen you throw one punch yet. No shadow boxing whatsoever. I've not stopped shadow boxing. Twitching all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm like there's, a, there's a lack of mirrors. As soon as I walk past <laughs> the mirror, I'm, I'm See, that's punches. Chris's problem too. I know. If there's know. a mirror, Always a lack of mirrors. Um, obviously, you boxed Reese Bellotti last year. I know you guys have become sort of quite friendly, and he's been up sparring Hopi Price recently in the gym. Um, it was a punch perfect performance from you last year. He's got Ray Ford in week three, talented young American. What do you make of that fight, Jordan? 
I think it's a very good fight. It's a very interesting fight. There's a few factors to sum up. I think the factor that it's a 10 rounder and Ray Four has not done 10 rounds before. The last time he stepped up to eight rounds, he got a draw. Thought he deserved to win that fight, but he did get a draw. Um, I feel like Reese Blotty needs to start fast because Ray Ford likes space. He likes time. Um, he likes to counter with single punches on the ropes. Um, Reese really needs to put it on him. But last year when I boxed Reese Bellotti, um I thought I did enough every every round to win the rounds. So I was it was a cautious yeah. fight for me. It was a fight that I was uh, coming back from uh, illness from, and uh, you know it was a must-win fight. So every round I done enough to win. I got the rounds banked and I, and I won the fight. But I feel like Ray Ford after that draw last time out, he'll really want to prove a point, and he'll be going all guns blazing to stop Reese Bellotti. Whether it works in his favour or not, we'll see. Would you say uh, Bellotti last time out would probably guilty of loading up against you and uh, he was able to ride the shots and, and get out there. Would it be a case for Bellotti this time uh, to get on the chest of Ford and make him work every second of every round? I feel like that that's the case. I feel like he needs to throw in volume. Obviously he tried last time but when he was missing he reverted back to type, yeah, he reverted yeah. back to throwing yes. single bombs and uh, you know I don't think he can do that with Ray Ford because I feel like he'll get, he'll, he'll get picked off a little bit. Um, but you know it's a very interesting fight yes. and, a, and a fight that I'm looking forward to. Um, now, one fight we are looking forward to, which we weren't expecting to be the main event, is of course Lee was challenge against Zhu Khan. He was offered you as an opponent, Zhu Khan, which not many people know, but he turned you down in favour of your, your good friend, uh, a guy you sparred many, many rounds with, Lee Woods. How can he go around about beating uh, this man tonight? How can Zhu Khan beat Lee Wood? How can Lee Wood beat Zhu Khan? Okay. Uh, it's a very interesting fight. It's a very, very interesting fight. I feel like. If Lee Wood needs to win this fight, he needs to get the taxes perfect. He's got a very good team around him. He's got Ben Davidson, he's got Lee Wiley, he's got Barry Smith at the MTK Performance Center. That's a great team. I'm sure they've studied and got their tactics perfectly. I feel like he needs to judge the distance really well. He needs to control yeah. that distance. He needs to take Kanzu's biggest uh, attribute away, and that's his volume. So how do you take someone's uh, volume away? You need to judge that distance right. You need to use your feet accordingly. You need to pitch your mo pick your moments. You don't fight fire with fire. Um, so he doesn't need to throw in volume with Kanzu. He needs to pick his moments and, and pick his spots. So We've heard Ben Davison wax Liverpool about Ali Wood's power. How hard does he actually hit? He can seriously bank. Yeah. He can seriously bank. Both There's, hands? Yeah, with both hands at any time in a fight. He's a very dangerous fighter. Um, and, you know, that's something I'm sure Kanzu will be, be, be wary of and something he needs to be wary yeah. of because, you know, this, this his WBA title can slip away from him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Would, you, would you say it's a case... When you're looking at the, the potential outcomes, is it Lee Wood stoppage and Zoo Cam points? Not particularly, no. I feel like I, I see a lot of people saying that the only chance Lee's got is, is winning by knockout, but I don't see that. I feel like Lee is a very good boxer. If he's, he can move, he can do a bit of everything. And um, if he gets his game plan right, I can see him knocking him out or I can see him win on right. points. But, you know, I can't see... Um, I can't see in history, well, from my recent memory, memory, a fighter, a British fighter, getting a world title opportunity out of the blue. Because let's be fair, this yeah, is a yeah, world yeah. title fight that we're not talked about before. A world title fight out of the blue, where they've had so many things in their favour. Yeah. You know, Kanzu hasn't ever boxed in England. This is Lee's hometown, home, home city, home uh, country. Yeah. Uh, Kanzu has probably got one of the lowest knockout percentages in uh, world champions in, 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 as a world champion. Was it three um, stoppages? Three stoppages. Yeah. He's got 15% knockout ratio. Um, you know, obviously he does throw a lot of punches, and that's something that Lee needs to, to be wary of. But you know, I feel like Lee's got everything in his favour tonight. Great stuff. Listen, we have uh, almost exhausted our time here because we've got to go and sit down for the first fight. I wanted to ask you about your plans going forward. I know you're a mandatory for Andoni Gargo. He set up that other fight with Kring Graffy. Hopefully, we get to see you against the winner or defending that WBA strap at some point down the line, Jordan. Sure, I'm ready to go, so whenever they want. Great to see you, mate. Thanks very much and enjoy the action tonight. Good luck to your man, you, Lee mate. Wood. Jordan Gilder, we hope to see him back out soon. Um, right, we are going to head over to our commentary position. Sandy Ryan is first up on the bill. She fights Kirsty Babington in her debut, six two-minute rounds. We're going to take our seats, shall we? Let's do it. See you soon. non-stop entertainment from Fight Camp, from the Matchroom HQ, The Zone. Do not miss it. They are literally changing the game. Rule one of Fight Camp. 
no easy fight. Someone's getting knocked out. We are going to deliver you such an unbelievable schedule. Let's have it! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Matchroom HQ here in Brentwood, Essex, England for Fight Camp 2021. We begin, we begin tonight, tonight live on the Zone and Matchroom's Facebook and YouTube, YouTube channels with a six-round six round super lightweight affair. affair. And, now and now set, set to make a ring, ring walk. walk. Please, Please welcome, welcome Kirsty. Kirsty. Bob Ho Bobbington. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Mention my name in your tweets. I remember shut up. Shut up. Can you be better than me? Shut up. 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 Shut up.
Tonight, she makes her much anticipated professional debut. This Team GB amateur standout took silver in 2014 at the World Championships and captured gold in 2018 at the Commonwealth Games. Fighting out of Derby, England, introducing Sandy Ryan. Ryan. So the first test in the professional journey of young Sandy Ryan. She was part of a seven strong team of women who went to the world champs for GB in 2019. But she did struggle with injuries in the last couple of years and she's had to wait patiently for her opportunity to turn over. Her opponent, Kirsty Bavington, is a well-known name on the circuit. And this is what you can expect from her. She wants to get into Sandy Ryan, make it rough, close that distance and put her in uncomfortable waters it's going to be on Ryan to try and manage this we saw Babington against Sherelle Brown in a banger at your call for the WBC international title Brown a three-time ABA champion back to back I think and Babington piled the pressure on her for for 10 rounds so we know what she's about Darren it's crude it's route one but it's going to be down to Sandy Ryan, how she adjusts and deals with it. Yeah, and do you know what? I think she'll enjoy having an opponent like this. She won't have to look for Babington. Sometimes when you have your debut and, and the few fights that follow, you're fighting journeymen and women that are looking to cover up, etc. But Babington's not that style of fight. She likes to be on the front foot. She likes to press the action, and that will suit Sandy Ryan. Well, she's already switching Sandy Ryan, just parrying with that right hand, looking for the left hand down the middle. Haven't seen this from her before. Nice left hand and then the uppercut nice. just brings her onto it and uh, well Clifton Mitchell, her coach, said that was a, a shot they would be looking for because Babington can come in a little bit square and those elbows are wide. Already landed the shot that they feel could be crucial in this fight. That lead uppercut looks for it again. And just pushing that head down of Kirsty Babington. She doesn't look ruffled so far, does she? No, she right? doesn't. You know, it was always going to be the case that the first 30 seconds she was going to come flying out Babington and it was about Sandy Ryan. You know, moving her feet, wouldn't, I wouldn't say weather the storm, but just sort of get her composure and look for the shots. That uppercut with both hands look, looks a great shot because Babington at times does fall over her front foot and is a sucker. Like you say, she's wide with her guard and can be caught with the uppercut. But good start from Sandy Ryan. Nice and composed the, the second minute. That was a lovely one-two. Beautiful left hand. So 10-second clapper. Six two-minute rounds, remember. And... Uh, already was speaking to uh, Rob Tebbett from Boxing Social earlier on this week and he said their aim was to have her first contest over six rounds because he felt that you know the four twos go by so quickly wants her to have learning experiences and there was no point in her having any soft touches given the level that she's boxed at in the amateurs either. I, I totally agree with, with Paul Reddy there and we'll see yeah, this is what Babington's all about roughing up her opponents tries to, to smother the award but there's that beautiful jab and that comes from the fantastic pedigree that Sandy Ryans has you know she's a Commonwealth Games gold medalist and you know, she knows how to box and she'll be out to find the openings against Babington who will be there will be in front of her she had some good wins in the amateurs beat Lauren Price when she was down a super welter I think that was Lauren's last bout of that weight before they moved her up for the Commonwealth Games in 2018 and the current GB team are lighting up the ring in Tokyo. Ryan's good friend Karis Artingstall just had her campaign ended today. Very, very close in the semi-final it was. She comes away with a bronze medal. Price two guaranteed a bronze as well. And uh, a whole host of the lads team is still in it. It's been a brilliant campaign under some difficult circumstances and Sandy Ryan will be pleased to see them all doing well and all in action on a weekend that is so crucial to her as well. Babington just lets the left hook go. Ryan's quick on her feet though, just turns her nicely on the ropes and that's good mm. smart ring craft from her. It is, she'll have to do more of that going through the ranks. But yeah, good good tidy boxing. Babington falling over her front foot a couple of times, like I said, she may do. And Sandy Ryan coming back with some nice check left hooks and right hands. The uppercut certainly is shot as well, she should be looking for again. There it is, beautiful shot. Again, credit to Babington really forcing the action, trying to find the openings herself.
interesting to see uh, Sandy Ryan and Babington at the, the way and have a bit of needle. You don't usually see that from a debutant, but uh, you can see she's just desperate to get going. She's, she's waited a while and you can see here, she, you know, she doesn't want to waste any time. She wants to get going and like I said before, th this is a good opponent for her. Ryan back on the jab for just over half a minute, then uh, walks her into the right hand. Babington again, just stepping in a little bit square. It's the two just tie up at centre ring. I like the way Ryan finds space. So it just takes a tiny little step out of range just to make Babington fall short and she throws. You've got brilliant variation is what I've noticed from, from Ryan. You know, body shots, head shots, hooks, uppercuts, and she's got the full artillery. And again, Good just switches shot. southpaw and just surprises Babington with that left hand and then a stiff right to finish the combination and pushes her back. She's not being out hustled or outworked here on the inside either. Good first couple of rounds for yeah. Sandy Ryan and uh, just a despondent look from Kirsty Babington as she goes back to her corner. Clifton mm -hmm. Mitchell in her corner is preparing Florian Marku for nice. Maxim Prodan. Uh, fight count week two. And that was the switch there. Beautiful shot. Lined lovely. The right hand, didn't she? Yeah, really, really nice shot. Really lovely shot. She wasn't loading up. And uh, I think it's so important for these youngsters. They're, they're, they're desperate to impress. They want to get the stoppages and knockout, and they can tend to load up at times. But mm -hmm. we see there Sandy Ryan showing her pedigree there, using the quick hands as opposed to power. That everyone will tell you that speed generates power, and uh, she's boxing nicely. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round three. We saw uh, Paul Mann and Errol Johnson in the corner of Kirsty Babington. She's in safe hands as well. And the two of them just exchange at the start of round number three. Oh, them uppercuts, beautiful shots. Just narrowly missed there with the left uppercut. But again, touching on her shot selection, it's really, really impressive. She's looking for it there, isn't she? The slip up a yep. bit. There's a couple of feints there, wouldn't have gone amiss. Try and draw the lead out of Babington. Just waiting a little bit too long without doing anything. Here now, little feint, little feint. Try and get Babington to lead, then you can throw the counter. Babington on the flip side. You know, she's not doing a lot wrong. You know, she's trying to close the gap, but if I was able to try and target the body of Sandy Ryan a bit more with the straight shots, she's moving really well, Sandy Ryan. But if you target that body, it can tend to slow your opponent down. Well, you can see Frank Smith back of uh, shot there. He's heavily involved with all the logistics and planning of, of these big events. Taking many trips out to the Middle East. Matchroom have had to be resourceful during the last 12 months. And this is Ooh, lovely shot. the pinnacle of uh, their resourcefulness fight camp. It was a lovely one too. Just landed there from Sandy Ryan. Has been sparring with uh, Savannah Marshall. Cool. Apparently been holding her own as well in those spars. Doesn't get much tougher than that, Chris, does I it? I mean, it does, she's, no. she's one of the leading females out there, Savannah Marshall. Been so impressed with her. So, I mean, that is fantastic preparation for a young fighter coming through. Been missed by much with that little slip lead uppercut, and now it's just a bit of showboating. She's in her groove here. Sandy Ryan, stiff jab, too. Just put a punctuation on another good round. It's in the books. Kirsty Babington heads back to her corner as well she's enjoying herself sandy ryan looking good in the end of that third round there having things all her own way well, would you believe she was supposed to be halfway down route 66 stateside this evening a dream holiday that was put on hold by the pandemic for kirsty babington instead replaced by what she said was the opportunity of her boxing career. I, I think I know where she might rather be at the moment, though. Yeah, absolutely. You, you say dream holiday. I think it would be your nightmare travelling Route 66 with me, Chris. I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to take separate cars. <laughs> Second out, round four. 
So here we go then, round four of six for Sandy Ryan and Kirsty Babington. Ryan, of course, in the white trunks with the pink trim, Babington all in blue. Again, just inching back, keeping that gap, looking for that stiff jab, and then the slip lead uppercut off the faint, just trying to bait Kirsty Babington in, but then when she does try and get rough, this is where she felt she'd have the best of it, but Ryan has held her own in these she, situations. She has. After three rounds, I think the thing I've been most impressed with is the hand speed of Sandy Ryan and also the composure. She's had Babington, lovely two shots there, that well picked, right hand, left hook there, lovely action from Sandy Ryan. Babington held the shots well, but now she's holding on. Trying to dig into the body. As I mentioned, we saw her against Sherelle Brown. She did not stop coming forwards, even though she was under fire. I'd say Ryan's a little bigger and potentially a little heavier handed than Sherelle Brown, but nonetheless, oh. a good operator, but a big left, left hand lands from Southpaw up close. Snaps the head back of Kirsty Babington. Some telling shots have landed from Sandy Ryan in this fourth round. 45 seconds on the clock. The yeah, intelligent boxing from, from Sandy Ryan. She opted for hand speed early on, and now she's really sitting down on her, her shots, putting in you know real spite into them. That left hook was a lovely shot. Really enjoying herself, isn't she, Chris? Yeah, progressing really well through this fight now, just shimmying hands low, looking to try and draw a lead. But Babington steps off, just perhaps the first signs of fatigue from the woman in blue, just takes a tumble. I think the feet came together. She looks tired there, Chris, breathing heavily. She's run out of ideas. Credit to Babington. She's really had a go the first couple of rounds, but coming second best to everything. Look at this beautiful boxing, picking the shots lovely. Two jabs there, followed by two right hands. That was lovely boxing from Sandy Ryan. It's impressive stuff so far. Yeah, she's looking very, very comfortable with this and uh, started to really, as you say, turn through those shots, land things of of note and just looking like she's starting to punch the fight out of a very tough Wolverhampton fighter that was a big left hand she kind of almost subtly switched to Southpaw on the inside and then just chopped it through and every time she has turned lefty Babington hasn't seen the shots coming and well that tells you how relaxed she is <laughs> yeah having a little boogie in the corner that says it all enjoying herself and there's not many times in a professional ring you can enjoy yourself and when you do get the opportunity why not you only get one debut, Chris. I've got to say, we're drifting into the fifth round here. Conditioning wise, she looks good because it's been fought at a fairly high pace, this. And Babington has tried to press her and tried to punch with her too. But Ryan looks to be well conditioned. And that's what Paul Reddy, her manager at STN Sports, said the plan is to try and build her through six rounds and then eight. But pretty quickly, they want to get her moving and get her boxing against decent opponents who are going to test her. That's what she wants. She's been waiting, she's been in the gym ready. There's a lot to like about it. Absolutely, there's a bit of everything. She's extremely comfortable on the front foot, but equally on the back foot, you see they're very elusive, good with her feet, her head movement, her reactions are as quick as her hands and her feet. You know, she, she has everything. It's about, you know, learning each round, each second of each round is a valuable experience. And especially someone against Babington that, look, she, she's not as good as Sandy Ryan, that's obvious, but she's forcing the pace, she's still having a go. Uh, and like we said before, this is the perfect opponent for Sandy Ryan on her debut. Lovely jab, sharp jab, the most important shot in boxing. And we've seen in this fight, she does like to switch at times, so it gives her two options. She's got the, the lead hand on the right jab and, and the left jab. She's, uh, she's a handful, Sandy Ryan, that's for sure. Well, just a reminder that we will be live 7 p.m. UK time on the zone around the world. Jack Cullen and Avni Yildirim, unlikely opponents in our opener. Move through Anthony Fowler and Rico Muller. Campbell Hatton in action as well. And then that fantastic oh, lovely cheap support. Shot. Lovely shot there from Sandy Ryan between Chris Billum Smith, Tommy McCarthy before Zhu Shan returns to the ring. For the first time in 21 months, defending his title against Lee Wood. That is all to come. 7 p.m. local time on the zone around the world subscribe if you haven't done so already sandy ryan starting to just break up kirsty babington one lovely one two there doing everything right sandy ryan but babington she needs to close up that guard and move her head a bit more because uh, this is this is almost target practice for sandy ryan now she's uh, landing at will with you know beautiful sharp 
jabs, right hands, hooks. So, yeah, I'd like to see Babington just close up that guard, move her head and stop herself from taking unnecessary punishment. But she's up against it because Sandy Ryan is uh, in full flow here. Yeah, it's that composure, Chris. Even under pressure, she's moving ahead. She's looking for the, the short uppercuts and just finding space. She, she's very intelligent. You can see that does help when you've got that amateur pedigree. Commonwealth Games gold medalist, like we've already touched on. You can see her, the, the class and the skill just oozing as, as each round goes on. And yeah, it's been a very impressive debut so far. Credit to, to Kirsty Babington, who has uh, hung in there. And, six and final round. you can see just from her body language, she knows she's a beaten woman. And she's going to have to roll the dice here if she's going to make a dent on this fight because she's got to be five rounds down going into the sixth. Yeah, absolutely everything to Sandy Ryan. I have to echo what you said at the start there. Credit to, to Babington. She, she stayed in there. She's put the pressure on even though she's second best. And look at her now. She's still giving it everything in the final round. And, it, and again there, some, some early intelligence for a debutant. Just to tie up your opponent, stop them from working, take their momentum away from them. And yes, it, it, you know, I've been very, very impressed from Sandy Ryan. Oh, a lovely shot. Walks her into a big right hand there. And Babington just held on for a minute. She felt that one. And the accumulative effect of these shots is starting to physically and visibly take its toll on the fighter from Wolverhampton. Will Sandy Ryan try and just step on the gas now? As Babington holds on. I think Clifton Mitchell said to me in the, in the week, he said, I've never had a fighter that takes instruction so quickly. He said, if I call out a punch, he said, the number of times a fighter will try and look for it four or five seconds later he said she's almost metronomic as soon as I call the shot she lets it go and he said it makes her a dream to coach and to be in the corner for on fight night and well she seems to have boxed to a good plan based on what they told us earlier on this week she hasn't been overawed in the clinch she hasn't been out muscled and out hustled and when they Beautiful. did a range like that she's landed wow. some good shots and Babington is hurt with oh. 30 seconds on the clock and she's starting to wilt here can Sandy Ryan find a little bit of space as the Seconds tick away. Babington doing her best yeah. to hold and spoil. Oh, oh big left, left hook from Sandy Ryan. What a punctuation to an almost punch perfect debut. Well, I mean, hats off to Babington. Fair play. I mean, she's taking some real punishment. And she's still there, still having a go. But what a debut from Sandy Ryan. That was punch perfect. That really was impressive stuff. Did everything she had to do there against an opponent that was in front of her non-stop. She showed composure, punch variation, speed. There was a bit of everything there and uh, she's got a very, very bright future moving forward, Chris. Oh, just the checks because she took some big shots in those last 45 seconds to a minute. But she held firm, spoiled well. Kirsty Babington. Now we talk about ideal debut opponents for someone that's boxed at the level she has as an amateur. That's just about as good as it gets. And of course, Darren, the, the key hallmark of last year was that fighters were having to take on challenges that would otherwise have been a little bit kind of further down the line for them. And that has been the biggest lesson of all that's been learned from the 12 months of the pandemic. No more soft touches, moving fighters properly. That's about as good as you're going to get for a debut opponent. Absolutely, and, and something you touched on as well, I think, after the fifth round. No deep breaths, and just like the end there, that, that was a, a decent pace after six rounds and a uh, testament to her condition. But look, this is what we know from Babington. She likes to close the gap, but good composure with the feet, the jab, and just boxing nicely. And she, she, she did that throughout the contest. Good variation, like I say, switching. You got the, the, the left backhand, the right backhand. Yeah, the, the, the uppercuts were fantastic shots. And... Yeah, the variation was brilliant. And as the rounds went on, she started to plant her feet a bit more and let the shots go. That slip inside with the left uppercut, she just narrowly missed there. But it was the, the attempt, you know, the know-how and, and the willingness to throw those shots that I was so impressed with. It was a very, very good debut. And once again, I will uh, take my hat off to Babington. She, she was in there till the end, still having a go, even though she was second best. But yeah. Brilliant, brilliant debut from Sandy Ryan. Look at the, the variation there. Lovely free shots with, with speed. 
looked that for lovely. a moment, didn't she? Like, yeah. uh, like she might be able to close things inside the distance, but they make them tough in Wolverhampton, a team. <laughs> they do. They do, mate. But, yeah, great debut. Well, that concludes the opening fight of the night. We're going to have a short break, and we'll be back with you in about 25 minutes, live on the zone uh, around the world. But we're just going to wait here for the uh, official result and the announcement. And David Diamante standing by, and we'll be back with you in about 25 minutes' time after this. So go away, do what you've got to do, and then come back and join us for a terrific night of action. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of action here at Matchroom HQ, we go to referee Mark Bates' scorecard. It reads 60 to 54 for your winner from Derby, Sandy Ryan. So no surprises there. Sandy Ryan off the mark, 1-0 as a professional. Great six rounds in the bank. She'll be grateful to Kirsty Bavington for that experience and to this crowd as well. who have come out to see her and the other five fights on the bill here at Match and Boxing HQ. And she played her part too, didn't she, Kirsty Bavington? So Sandy Ryan off the mark. We will be back in around about 25 minutes from now here at Fight Camp, live on the zone around the world. Chris Lloyd and Darren Barker, stick with us. We'll see you very, very soon. Welcome to the zone. See the biggest fights live and on demand. Get the most in-depth fight week experience. <laughs> Join the zone inside the training camps, press conferences, he talks so much. workouts, and weigh-ins. And the exclusive the zone boxing show brings you all the latest news and interviews with boxing's biggest names every weekday. All be thrown in the deep end in 2021. Playback breaks down the biggest fights with the boxers, trainers, and promoters that made them. Beautiful. Experience some of the greatest stories in boxing through award-winning original documentary film. Nobody wanted to fight him. He was killing everybody. Unlock over 30 years of boxing brilliance in the DAZN archive and watch the fights that made the legends. Pound for pound, the best in the world. Welcome to DAZN.